always watch some highlights, some radioactives. But we're going to switch it up. I'll get into the highlights and the radioactives that I missed from that month and from this week because I know y'all going to want to see it. My mom ended up telling me about this YouTube video she found about this 24 hour like car racing event or something and how like a bunch of people almost died or something. And so she sent me the video to react to because it was, I guess it was like this crazy ass thing that happened. So I'm going to react to that today because it just seems really interesting. And I will get to the radioactive and highlights tomorrow. I promise you. I promise you. Y'all will get it. But original video will be down in the description. And if you guys have heard of it, let me know down in the comments. But let's get into the video. In sunshine, none of the quarter million crowd suspect a tragedy. That Hopefully some type of voiceover or something over it. The year what? is 1955. Okay. The nations of Europe have known peace for a decade. In June, they are gathered in France, this time not for an invasion, but a battle of a more friendly nature. 24 hours of Le Mans, the world's oldest active sports car endurance race. Le Mans challenges teams to a 24 hour race, the winner being whoever can cover the greatest distance over that time. This means car companies must produce cars that can not only achieve great speeds, but can reliably maintain them over extended periods of time without mechanical failure. This challenge saw the deadly- Without mechanical failure? Y'all were just starting to make automobiles and shit, and y'all over here trying to- Okay. Crash in racing history, when a newly designed they were sports really, car like, catastrophically disintegrated this. and killed 84 people. God damn. Yeah, they really stretched that. Uh, that just didn't even sound safe or smart at the Le moment. Le Mans 1955 opened on the 11th of June. There were an estimated 250,000 spectators in attendance to watch racing superstars compete in a variety of state-of-the-art sports cars. Ferrari, Jaguar and Mercedes-Benz were all favorites and each team showed up with their newest machines. Early on in the race, each company had a car competing for the lead. The Ferrari 735 Le Mans was fast. I thought a Ferrari looked like failure when pushed too hard. As such, the leading Ferrari slowly gave way to the British Jaguar and German Mercedes. Mike Hawthorne in his Jaguar D-Type, a car designed specifically to win the Le Mans race, was battling to stay ahead of Juan Manuel Fangio in his Mercedes-Benz 300 SLR, a car that had debuted its ultra lightweight magnesium alloy body in that year's World's Sports Car Championship. Two hours into the race, Hawthorne is leading on his 35th <laughs> lap, but Fangio is not far behind him. As he comes up on the pits, he laps Pierre Levey, another Mercedes driver. He is then about to lap Lance Macklin, who is driving an Austin Healey. Seeing Hawthorne is about to lap him, Macklin makes room for him to pass, and as he does so, Macklin gives him a thumbs up to wish him luck in the race. Okay. To Macklin's surprise, Hawthorne then motions that he is going for a pit stop. These being the days before dedicated lanes allowed racers to decelerate into the pits, oh. Hawthorne now applies his brakes in front of Macklin. Hawthorne's Jaguar was fitted with state-of-the-art disc brakes, and the speed at which he was able to brake caught Macklin off guard. He was now on a collision course with the decelerating Hawthorne. And this is just sounds like where it goes Hawthorne. all bad. But this puts him in the path of LeVay, who is barreling towards him at 150 miles per hour. Jesus! LeVay has no hope of avoiding Macklin. Bro, what the fuck? One arm to warn the oncoming Fangio that there is about to be a massive collision. LeVay's Mercedes ramped off the back of Macklin's Austin Healey, sending the Mercedes rolling through the air towards oh helpless spectators. God. As LeVay launched past him, Macklin's damaged car veered into the barrier and bounced off into the pits where it ran over several people before coming to a stop against the barrier. Macklin himself jumped out of the wreck and survived, as did wow. those hit by his car. Coming up behind both oh, cars, okay. a speeding Fangio manages to pass through the wreck as it's unfolding. Jeez, that was some lucky ass shit. It's possible that without LeVay's warning beforehand, the Fangio would have slammed right into the crash. And so, Hawthorne, Macklin and Fangio narrowly escape the crash with their lives. But what about Pierre LeVay? As his car hurtles into the embankment, LeVay is thrown out onto the track and killed instantly. At the pit stop, his smoldering body is visible to his co-driver, who was ready to receive the car at the upcoming stop, 
and his wife. Upon hitting the embankment, the Mercedes oh, explodes, wow. sending parts flying into the grass wow. and into its spectators. Whole families are Dude, killed. Dude, okay, y'all. So the thing about this shit is, I think you can actually watch the video because these are like live clips. So I'm pretty sure you can watch the actual like whole video on YouTube. I don't know if I'm able. I mean, it's on YouTube, so I feel like I'd be allowed to fucking react to it and post it, and I have no issues. But YouTube be weird. So let me know down in the comments if you want to see me react to like the actual race itself. Um, but yeah, let, just just let me know. The engine block and radiator cut through the audience. It was reported that 14 people are decapitated by the car's detached hood. To make matters worse, the ultralight alloy of the Mercedes body is partly magnesium, which is highly flammable. The crowd is engulfed in white hot flame. Unsuspecting rescue workers attempt to pour water on the magnesium fires, which just causes greater combustion. Yeah. In all, 84 people are killed, and between 1 and 200 are injured. It's speculated that the death toll... Okay, I'm pretty sure I was wrong at the beginning of this. That's a lot more people than I thought. ...to the wounds weeks later in hospital. It remains the deadliest motorsport accident in history. Despite the tragedy, the race continued. Mercedes-Benz eventually what? made the decision... What? What do you mean the race continued? Do people not have common sense? If this happened once, it can most definitely happen again. And this was massive on a huge fucking scale. So why would you want this to continue? How do you even allow this to continue? To pull out of the race and called their cars into the pit stop late that night, despite holding first and third place. A senior member of the team approached Jaguar's manager and asked if they too would pull out of the race out of respect for the victims. Jaguar refused and Mike Hawthorne's team won them the nice. event with 307 laps clocked in over the 24 hours. Not wow. a single Ferrari finished the event, all of them having mechanical issues. Responsibility for the crash has been pointed at and passed to various drivers. The case against Mike Hawthorne states that he cut off Lance Macklin and abruptly decelerated in front of him, forcing him to swerve. Others state that the crash was due to poor handling by Macklin or Pierre Levé himself. Despite his initial I feel like with a situation incident, like this, I guess everybody takes things differently as it's happening. So maybe he thought he was letting them pass, but he wasn't. He cut him off. Who fucking knows, bro? But that, that just ended way like, like that ended really. Mike Hawthorne went on to disclaim responsibility in his 1958 autobiography. Upon reading it, Macklin thought that this implied he was responsible and he opened a libel action against Hawthorne. This went unresolved as Hawthorne died in a non-racing related crash in England in 1959. Ironically, it had happened as his Jaguar was overtaking a Mercedes-Benz. Officially, no one was held accountable for the accident, but fault was found with the Le Mans track, which was largely unchanged from its construction in 1923, when the cars could only reach a third of the speeds they could by 1955. The track saw extensive changes over the next year. During this time, many European countries banned motor racing until safety regulations could be reviewed and yeah, updated. Yeah, they need in a fucking lot. This ban is still in place. Really? Many drivers retired shortly after, and Mercedes-Benz withdrew from motor racing until 1987. So, thankfully, the tragedy has remained in the past, Jesus. just like the war 10 years before it. And while none of us experienced it, and hopefully we'll never witness a recurrence. The imagined horror paints a vivid picture, even when memory cannot. The scene on the other side of the road was indescribable. The dead and dying were everywhere. The cries of pain, anguish and despair screamed catastrophe. I stood as if in a dream, too horrified to even think. Mind. He was a veteran? Wow. Yo, the fact that there is still a ban 
in Switzerland. So no racing in Switzerland. That shit is crazy because this video came out this year. Did y'all know about this? Because if y'all knew about this and y'all didn't fucking tell me, I'm going to be a little upset because I should have knew about this. So thank you, mom, for telling me about this. I still can't believe how they allowed it to keep going after that ha happened. Like, and people's morals just ain't straight because they said, hey, do you want to continue? Any logical person would have said, no, nah, I don't want to continue. This is this is horrible. No, nah, I want to continue. I want to win. What? Huh? Ain't no fucking way. Ain't no fucking way. With all that being said, though, I hope y'all enjoyed the reaction. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see y'all in the next one. I love y'all. Peace. They wanna fall, what? Back when I was down bad, was stuck in the mud. Now nigga, they cleaned up Louis V on the so-so, what? Way back.